Hey, Pilot Tops here with the Technician Mech. All right, this is another one of my personal favorite mechs to play. Uh, just pause here for the stats, like always. Well, yeah, this is actually a Class A mech. It's a light mech, and uh, it's actually in the support category, and it's a healer mech, which is different from a lot of the other mechs that you've probably seen in the game. So, yeah, this is going to be interesting to go over, and I've got quite a bit of info on this guy. So, yeah, don't worry. I'll make sure you guys know how to be medics and know how to be the worst nightmare for the other team. But, yeah. So, without much further ado, let us go see the medic! Alright, so, the weapons that come standard on the technician is called the Redox 02, which is the primary weapon, and it's also the Helix Repair Torch, which is the secondary weapon. It's got two modes, it's got healing and hurting. But the healing is little time for the hurting. <laughs> and uh, aside from the weapons, the ability is called Amplify, which is kind of like a mini uber charge if you've ever played Team Fortress 2, but... Again, I'll go over all of these in detail really quickly, so yeah, let's just get into the basic mechanics of how to pilot the technician. Okay, so first thing about the technician, obviously you're a healer class, so you're not very outfitted for battle, and you also don't have a lot of armor. You have the least armor in the game, 315, even less than the scout, which has 320. And unlike the scout, you don't have as much speed as it, so remember to stay by your team at all times, because you can't just go willy-nilly into battle and expect to come out of victory, you know, guns blazing. No, this is a healer class, and it is strictly tailored towards that. And so, this is how you want to go about it, is that obviously the weapons are built as a support function. I mean, seriously, you have a repair beam as uh, your secondary weapon instead of a tow, tow rocket, and also your primary weapon does not do a lot of damage. It has a support function to it, kind of like Mama Bear if you watched my incinerator uh, video, but this is the redox for the technician. And so, how the technician also works, in fact, even how its heat generation and everything works, is uh, it definitely makes it much more of a support class. So, how the, like I said when I mentioned the heat generation, if you try to fire your uh, primary weapon along with uh, using your repair beam on, the, on uh, your allies, you're going to heat up very, very fast. So heat management on the technician is very important. Even though your overheat recovery time is only about like three and a half seconds, maybe just three, you still need to be very careful because as soon as you overheat, I mean, you're useless as a technician because you're not going to be able to heal your teammates and that means, you know, uh, people are going to be dying that you don't want to die. Now that that's out of the way, let me explain the weapons of the technician a little bit more. Now, I said the uh, primary weapon was called the Redox 02, the starting weapon, and what it is is that it's not meant for damage directly. It's much, it more helps your team damage out because any enemies that are hit by the Redox will experience a debuffing effect, which means that their actual damage resistance goes down. So, enemies hit by the Redox will take uh, increased damage uh, increased damage from your teammates. And so what that means is, and it also, the effect supposedly stacks up, so if you hit them once, it does, you know, a certain amount, and then you hit them twice, it does it even more, and it stacks up to three times. And I think the uh, damage increase stacks up to about 15%. And also, be aware of the Redox as well. It's a projectile weapon, it's not hit scan, and it does have an arc to it. Kind of like I said, like with Mama Bear. And also, it does have splash damage. You can hit yourself with it and also debuff yourself. And so, if you debuff yourself, you're already very, very weak as a technician because you don't have much armor. And if you're taking extra damage, you're just going to die, like, instantly. It, it's just... So make sure that when you fire it, there's no one in front of you because keeping people in front of you is actually going to be part of the job as a technician and how, and how I'll explain the Helix Repair Torch and how it works. Okay, so as I mentioned before, the Helix Repair Torch has two modes. Got construct and deconstruct. Construct mode is obviously the healing beam, it's the yellow beam that you see, and then it, I don't know if you ever saw me, I pulled out the red beam. You hit middle mouse and then it turns the helix repair torch into a deconstruct beam, which can attach to enemies and uh, will uh, deal damage to them. Now, the helix repair torch, it obviously heals your own allies and it also repairs you as well. So, keeping your repair torch on an ally or an enemy if need be is pretty much essential to being able to play the technician. However, you're gonna want to be able to try to stick it more on your allies more because obviously it heals more than it'll deal damage to your enemies so it's obvious so as far as uh, overall output it's much much more beneficial to s keep healing a teammate rather than rushing in to try to help out increase the damage increasing the damage that's what you want your redox to do when you land shots and now you notice me kind of hopping up and flying a little bit that's because I don't want to you know shoot my teammate in their butt and then end up damaging myself because of the re nature of the redox. However, just like in any other mech, if you linger in the air for too long, there's a good chance you're gonna be dead. So, 
remember, like, I hop up and over just to be able to fire off a couple shots, then I go back down on the ground and start dodging enemy shots, because, like I said, the ground is your friend. Now, I'll talk a little bit more about the deconstruct mode a little bit later, but as far as the construct mode, there also is a limited, like, uh, line of sight that you can have with the uh, repair beam. It's kind of sticky to a certain degree. Uh, like, if as soon as somebody passes a certain uh, amount out of your sight, you're not going to be able to start healing them anymore. So you have to kind of keep your crosshair on your teammate or your uh, target in order to keep healing them or dealing deconstruct damage. But, you know, uh, you basically do have to just kind of keep people in front of you. You can't just, uh, like, if you remember Medic from TF2, you can kind of just look anywhere and you'll still be healing them. No, you do have to keep your target somewhat in front of you when you're using the Repair Torch. And now, I know we switch clips, and let me tell you what this new weapon is. First, uh, just a couple last quick notes on the Helix Repair Torch. Obviously, yes, it does have limited range, and also the healing that you do outside of combat versus inside of combat, meaning that if you or your target or your uh, heal target are getting taken shots, your healing beam will, be, will uh, heal less than is as if you were just like outside of combat, you know, not taking any fire at all. So just remember that inside of combat, it'll heal less. And it also applies when the ability activates. But for, yeah, let's get on to this uh, new alternate weapon that you see me using here. It's called the Hawkins RPR, and if you see my Reaper video, I'm sure you recognize it. It's the same weapon. But on the Technician, you know, it, it, it plays similarly too, but how it's different from the Redox is that it gives you a much better fighting chance when you end up alone. And if you're playing Technician correctly, you really should be ending up alone, but in a pinch, the, the RPR is far better to use for survival. Survival, not assault. It's far better to use for survival than the RPR, and then, no, not the RPR, the, uh, the RPR is way better than the Redox as far as survival inside of a situation where you end up alone. And now, as I said, uh, the RPR, I will admit, it is kind of like a battle technician loadout, so you can, be, you can see me being pretty aggressive uh, with the RPR right now. Uh, but, you know, like I said, it, it, it's a big risk if you decide to go battle technician because you can still very, very easily die. The main reason why I did it was because I was facing AI. But yeah, like I said, even when you're using the RPR, you still want to focus on being a healer because, I mean, if you want to focus on fighting, then go assault. I mean, you wouldn't be a technician if you want to focus on fighting. But, you know, but, you know like, for funsies or just to, you know, screw around, the RPR is pretty fun to use. That being said, even inside of a real game, like, uh, the RPR is the better choice if you want, if you know you need to be able to survive more and that maybe your team is not as, uh, as competent as fighters as you would like, then the RPR would be a better choice. Otherwise, I'd go with the Redox, because then you can increase your team's damage output, you know, uh, soften up a lot of the enemy targets, and so that'll help your team out more than just, you know, you dealing a little bit of extra damage, since, you're, since your team is already competent at fighting. And plus, the Redox is also very good at objective-based games, where, you know, people will be holed out somewhere, and so uh, the, the uh, having to lead your shots becomes a little bit easier, because people will be pretty concentrated in certain areas. But yeah, but overall, I'd say uh, the RPR is probably a little bit better in some regards, and the, the Redox, though, it is probably the better weapon for when you want to learn it, so I definitely do recommend unlocking the RPR and getting it when you can, because it is pretty good. However, the RPR, while it is fun, it's not my favorite ever since they actually released the new Technician Prestige weapon, but I'll go over that in a little bit. But now, as you can probably see, you see like, me activating uh, like a green beam. Now what that is, is the ability Amplify. Now Amplify, what it does is actually, you know, it increases the uh, the output of your Helix Repair Torch in both modes, in both Deconstruct and Construct. Uh, so you'll heal for a lot more, and you'll also Deconstruct for a little bit more. Now obviously it has the greater effect on the Healing Beam, more so than the Deconstruct Beam. Now as well as increasing the output for the Healing and the Deconstructing Beam, it also increases the output of the self-heal that the Technician uh, does, you know, when you're using the Helix Repair Torch. And so, uh, you can use this ability to save yourself in a pinch, like when you can't, like, you know, try to retreat and repair, uh, and your team really needs you to be able to heal them, and not just, you know, because most of your repairing should be done as a technician, is uh, just from, you know, just repairing your teammates. And so, you can pop this ability to save yourself when you really need to, and, you know, if you've ever seen uh, the play Team Fortress 2, you already know the rule, pop it, don't drop it. So, 
uh, yeah, you can use Amplify to save yourself as well. And it's also pretty good if you want to go aggressive, but, you know, like I said, going aggressive in the Technician, I only ever do it when my teammate has a very clear advantage in numbers and in health. Like, if my teammates pretty low are low on health, I'm not going to go aggressive because I know they're going to need me to heal them more so than that little bit of extra damage. My healing will probably more likely save them than my extra damage output. Now, we're switching over to the Prestige weapon, so hang tight. Okay, so here's the prestige weapon for the technician. It is called the PN330 or 230. I don't know the exact numbers, but I know it's PN something. But this is the prestige weapon that has said coming soon for like the longest time. And so I'm glad that they finally came out with a prestige weapon for the technician. And it's my favorite out of all the technician weapons. And well, the reason's a little bit complicated, so try to bear with me while I uh, explain my reasoning behind this. This weapon does not have the damage output that the RPR has, but it does have more than the Redox has. And it also, like, not just in terms of damage, also in terms of functionality of this weapon, it's in between the support role of the uh, Redox and then, like, the damage role of the of the RPR. It, it has a nice, snug little middle in there. However, the thing that I like about this thing the most is the heat efficiency that this thing has. As I said, with the Redox and the RPR, when you use them in combination with the Helix Repair Torch, your heat will just skyrocket. This weapon makes it a little bit less, so you can still uh, heal your teammates and uh, be able to output a little bit of extra damage to support them, which is what the best technicians do. They heal their teammates while also uh, uh, giving a little bit of supporting fire. That's what the best technicians are able to do. And it, but it takes a lot of practice because that involves, you know, keeping your teammates in front of you while also being able to actually, you know, get a little bit around them and be able to shoot your targets that you're going to be firing at. And so that takes a lot of practice. But like I said, it's best because it functions very well as a support weapon. It has very good heat efficiency. It doesn't have the best damage output. Uh, that's what the RPR is for. But like I said, you won't overheat as nearly as much with the PN. And now how the PN actually works is that it. It's a, it's a three shot burst round and it's like a pistol type of a weapon so it's good at close and medium range now it's not as good for going uh, really aggressive like you know you saw me doing with the RPR it, it's not as good for that but you know it'll still help you in a pinch but you know it's better than trying to fight with the redox because fighting with the redox can just be you know a giant hassle but I like it because it gives you a little bit of burst damage with the technician even though it's not a lot and the technicians mostly DPS let me just put it to you this way if you get killed by a technician it's just downright embarrassing because you should not be killed by a technician just just so you guys know but you know getting technician kills are fun as all hell but anyways uh, moving back to the weapon like I said it's got a three round burst to it and it's good and its accuracy how it works is pretty good just for uh, you know close to medium range and uh, yeah yeah as far as the alternate and the prestige weapons on the technician they don't require too much finesse in order to be able to use I mean they're just hit scan bullet weapon so it's pretty easy the only thing with the PN is just remember it's not an automatic like machine gun kinda like the RPR it, it, it does fire in a three round burst so remember when you're trying to deal out damage remember to do that I generally kind of uh, don't use the full automatic function so I can save myself some heat and not you know completely overheat and so and then I hit my uh, shots a bit more accurately so I like to semi fire rather than just full auto fire with types with a uh, weapon types like this okay so like a few tips of being coming a better technician is uh, just as far as general technique goes uh, learn the uh, range limits and the angle limit of your helix repair torch that way you can be much more efficient in how you heal people and be able to also be giving a uh, supporting fire instead of just you know focusing only on healing and not being able to shoot anything at all because as I said, your technician is mostly it's just as a healing support, but you do want to be able to give out some supporting damage because then you're maximizing your effectiveness as a technician. And it's also something you have to learn as well, is part of being a technician is called triage, and that's who to save and who not to. I'm sorry, but it has to be done because I'm, I hate to say it, but some players are usually a bit more savable than others. So if you see somebody who's being reckless and constantly kamikaze diving into the enemy team and just getting slaughtered don't save them because you're just gonna end up dying and more than likely you know you're just gonna be feeding you're just feeding the enemy at that point so don't help somebody feed the enemy team and also just learn to keep an eye out on your enemy I mean not your enemy your uh, teammates health bar you can see I mean you're able to see just like you know on your heads-up display whoever's you know around you and uh, you can keep an eye on their health bars. However, I will say this, if someone's too far away, don't try to save them. They're kind of on their own and, you know, it's kind of their 
it was their choice to get too far away from you, so, it, it, hey, they were on their own. So, usually what I try to do is I try to heal people that are within my radar range, I can see friendlies on my radar, then I'll usually do my best to heal them, but if I see someone who's just way, way too far out of range, it's just like, hey buddy, you're too far from me, I can't, you know, I'm a medic, I'm not a miracle worker here, so, you know, if you want the help, you gotta stick by me. You know, I can't, like, uh, chase... If I had to chase down every single teammate on my team, I wouldn't be able to heal uh, the majority of my team if I go after that one guy who's just, like, solo YOLOing it. You know, uh, well, most of the other team players who are actually sticking together, you know, doing their best to work together and uh, accomplish the goal, uh, I should probably... I should be able to, you know, heal them more so than someone who's trying to lone wolf it. I mean, if they are going to lone wolf it, why do they need a medic? Oh, yeah, and if you see a player who's... You know, just standing out there, acting like a bullet sponge. Don't bother saving them, because unless they're dodging and actively, you know, trying to save themselves, you're not going to be able to save them. You can't save someone who's not trying to save themselves, just so you know. So if you see someone who's just, like I said, they're being reckless, they're not doing anything that concerns survival, don't bother saving them, because, you know, it's clear that they don't want to be saved. Alright, I'm quickly going to gloss over my items and internals. The items are pretty much the same. It's hologram, repair charge, but I use the blockade on my technician instead of the shield because the shield will block my repair beam, and then the blockade, I can actually heal it to heal myself when I need to, and it'll also block enemies in their path so they can't walk up to me. And as far as internals, I still use the air compressor because, you know, as far as smoothest to piloting, and if I need to float up in the air to heal people, it helps. And then I also use this thing called the replenisher. What the replenisher does is I get, uh... I, it reduces the time of my cooldown whenever I get kills and assists, uh, the cooldown of my ability, so it really, really helps. But yeah, that's pretty much all there is for my technician guide. I hope you guys liked it, you guys learned stuff, you learned how to be the medic. And uh, yeah, like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more, and yeah, next time will be the sharpshooter. But for now, this is Soldier Hobbs, signing off.